We're very happy to spread the word a bit about um, our topic that we are concerned. We're from the HPI School of Design Thinking in Potsdam, so we already heard a bit about it um, from our previous speakers. And yeah, we are concerned about innovation spaces, so this is actually our topic that we're going to talk about. And um, yeah, well, we're in the design thinking research program there, but because this is a short talk, we th decided to not bore you with too extensive re scientific research outcomes, but really give you a, like a broader overview about it, I would say. So uh, within design thinking, um, we have the three components, the multidisciplinary teams, the process that they need to, as a common language, to understand each other, to work together in a way. Um, we heard about this this morning already. And the space is um, also very important there um, to actually support their innovative process. And um, so this is what we are also concerned about. Um, yeah, so we, in our work, we actually um, see more and more that there's an interest in this topic. And uh, we believe also that, and we found out in our research, that the space can be a powerful tool for um, fostering innovation. So um, before we talk about what are actually innovation spaces, we actually want to take you back uh, in time a bit to understand how this has changed and, and why, um, how the workspace accords also to the way we work. So, oh, now I shut it off. Oh, there. So, if you look at this kind of workspace, after industrialization, there was already big offices, what you can see more and more now today as well. But here you see people were really working individually and had their clear tasks to do. They knew what they, they were doing, they, were ex they knew what they were expected. And we already heard about um, how this is completely different now. And um, with becoming more in in individualized, um, people were maybe put into cubicles working alone, but still they had their clear task. It was just a normal office work, what they were supposed to do. And um, maybe increased complexity led to scenes like this, but still you were working alone in your office and uh, even more separate, not even in a big office anymore. So how, now it's not working anymore? <laughs> ah, yeah. So. What we are concerned, as we said before, are these innovation spaces. And actually, it's interesting to see how came the change of these singular offices um, to innovation spaces that are popping up more and more, and companies are trying to incorporate these spaces in their um, daily offices to create an innovation culture, as we also heard just in the previous talk. And, um, well, actually, we, um, yeah. So why did space move into focus and why is, are there innovation spaces? And we identified three main drivers that we summarized as the 3Ds, actually. So the first one is the dynamics, which is um, concerning the different tasks, as I said before. There was only one task to do, this was a normal office, um, work environment where you had to work on your desk, but now you have to do different things. You have to um, work in teams, you have to, um, do different things within the design thinking or the innovation process within your work and so you need more variety in your um, in your workspace as well to support this actually or this can help you. Another um, aspect is demographics so this is actually also what we heard this morning about the millennials. People want to choose their workspace actually so you have to have an attractive workspace to attract them or show them that it um, they actually um, are supported in their uh, ambition to be innovative and so on. So uh, you have to make maybe a, a, a team living room, create that for the teams, because they also want to live there, actually. Um, so, oh. so, and the third D is the um, technological development, which we also heard a bit about today. Um, well, through the digitalization especially, you have the chance to work from everywhere or anywhere. And uh, the question comes up, what is actually the role of the physical space? And um, wh what are the new options also that this provides? So, um, summarizing this, um, innovation spaces actually f um, facilitate the different work modes, the different uh, pro uh, steps that you take throughout the innovation process. 
it um, communicates an innovation culture, as we just heard, um, through certain things, but it, also the space can communicate that. And um, it provides also the resources for knowledge development and materials and so on. So, um, yeah. So just for the clarification, this is actually what we found out also in our research, that um, workspaces actually always consist of these three components in a way. And of course, there are some points overlapping. And um, yeah, so it's not always clear where to, um, where to uh, yeah, categorize it in. But these are actually the three aspects that I just also mentioned. So... Um, we ask ourselves in, the, in our research project, actually, what are the spatial factors of innovation? Not only the, the obvious, so the interior design, but actually what makes the space work also. So, and as I said, we just want to provide you with some overview of our findings, and um, they come mainly from two studies that we conducted. One was the uh, study with, where we investigated different best practices in the US and Germany and looked at their spaces, what do they actually have. And there the focus was more on the physical space, while um, in another study we, that we conduct right now is a case study with four organizations that set up innovation labs or redesigned a workspace to make it more innovative or to support innovation. Um, there we've uh, also focused on what actually makes it worse, so also going beyond the more obvious. So, um, first of all, oh, this is a bit, uh, yeah, but you can still see it. Um, as we said, this, the innovation space has to facilitate different work modes. So, what did we find at the, um, at the best practice examples? is actually that collaboration, of course, is very important for teams. We already heard it a few times before. So, um, what we found are different spatial settings actually that foster collaboration. On the one hand you have the team spaces that are more or less the home base, maybe there's a picture of the DISCO in Stanford or SAP Innovation Center. Um, meeting rooms are also important to have more like a, an exchange of information maybe. Or you have informal communication in the kitchen or in uh, the lounge area and so on. So these are just a few examples of where collaboration is fostered through the space. Um, another aspect in um, innovation processes is, of course, the focus. You cannot always collaborate and always ideate, but sometimes you just have to do your own research or have to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, smaller aspect. So, yeah, these are just some examples of spaces where um, you have individual focus, of course, then together, one-on-one -on -one or in, um, in a group, but next to each other because usually you don't, or maybe you don't want to be in your small cell alone, but also for um, being together, but individually, but separate, yeah. So um, then of course sharing information is very important, especially when working in a team and with others. So in the team space, visualize your findings, especially when you, um, well, spread out to do your research alone or something and then share them and really build on each other, build on the ideas that you have, but also get inspired by um, ex kind of exhibiting um, your products or previous products from other teams or just something you inspire, that inspires you, but also presenting to each other. So this is what we found. Um, and then of course, get your hands dirty, create and build and make um, is very important. Uh, you have the, like, the garage at D-School, which is really for making, trying out things and um, to actually get into the, the iterative mode of, of just failing and trying. And yeah, and some other examples of some make spaces. And then we already heard it, you always need the breaks in the innovation processes. Um, there's also some, sp um, all of, of the um, companies actually had spaces for relaxing. And this could also look differently. So some people maybe just need a nap, others really like to do sports to relax or recreate, or others like to uh, play games and do that already again. And there you can also see that, of course, this also might foster collaboration then if you do this together. So this is how it also overlaps. So, but we dis discovered even more. So there's not only uh, physical structures, but also non-physical ones. And um, one could be um, human facilitation. So um, 
uh, normally you build an innovation space and it should be self-explanatory, but in, in reality, mostly it's not. So you have to understand um, the space. And you can do that through human facilitation, for example. So one of our partners, what did they? They implemented a host. And um, you can apologize for the pictures. Uh, for the picture, it's not, not the best one, but maybe you can see the host on the left side of the, of, of the picture. And what he does is he welcomes the people and he's part of the atmosphere of the organization. And he also connects the people within the space and within the organization. Yeah, and... Um, and um, yeah, um, explains the space and its functions and everything. So okay. yeah, yeah. So this is also really important, of course, to support what are the physical structures, and then the space um, serves as communicator of an innovation culture. Um, so what did we find found for the, from the physical side is the style of the space. If it looks unfinished, you also get the, the vibe of, okay, I want to finish it or I want to change something and you're able to do that. Maybe um, rather or spill something on the floor while you're creating and making and um, actually make the space your own because you're allowed to move things around. So there it's um, important. And of course the industrial style kind of always um, is supposed to make you build and make, create. And of course the atmosphere plays a an important role. So if you have um, a setting like this with the tables, um, as is the case in the, at the Impact Hub in San Francisco, and I think a few Impact Hubs around the world also, is um, these paddles, they should, are supposed to create a sense of community because you can tap the other person just on the shoulder behind you. And um, while having just uh, tables in a row, doesn't really um, create an atmosphere of community, maybe. Then having a meeting room in the, in the kitchen creates the atmosphere of feeling at home, making you comfortable, really making the place your own. And also, as, a, um, as you already said, um, it's, like, it's really important to have the feeling to be together and be comfortable. And of course, a learning environment uh, fosters learning, learning atmosphere. So Marie already talked a lot about it, and, and the atmosphere can be a connector between the physical and the non-physical structures, and so you also have to think about um, the organizational structures. What kind of an organization am I? What do I want? Yeah, what for people do I want to work for me? And you can also communicate that, that through your space, through maybe the more non-physical one. <coughs> and can you please go on? So um, you can communicate your values or your common vision. For example, we work together with um, a social entrepreneur, entre yeah, entrepreneur, and they want to make the world a better place. So and you can show that and communicate that through your space. Then in innovation processes, it's um, mandatory um, to have low, almost non hierarchies, because you want the people to be equal. And one example could be. Um, equal salaries or um, that people have no assigned workspaces, that they are free to move around. Um, also, you want um, the people to um, invite the people to um, evolve and develop your company and include them in your decisions. And last but not least, transparency is very important. Yeah, yeah. Um, Make the people part of your knowledge and um, um, invite them to have participate in your, your decisions. So, Last but not least, the space, the workspace is also a great provider of resources for innovation. So, well, flexibility is kind of provided, but there you can see again, it can put, also be put in, into other categories. But that's really important to be able to move the things around, put them where you need them, put them, so here you have an example again of the D-School Stanford, but the D-School in Potsdam is set up the same way in that everything is on wheels. So you can actually move it around, put it where you need it, put the couch in your team space if you have maybe a, a, a debrief where you want to talk about more um, loose, in a more loose way, or put it away again, have the whiteboards on um, racks so you can always have them available, but also can, t can take them outside and the prototyping material on wheels to really roll it wherever you need it, for example. But then, of course, the, um, what is also provided are uh, materials and resources to build, or tools. So if the make space is everything is closed up, 
probably, if you're not really used to it or don't know how to build something, you might not use it. So it's really important that you um, display the tools that you have, um, that you can actually choose from them. Also with the prototyping material, it's very helpful to have it all in front of you, to get inspired, to really try it, use it, and uh, don't have to select in advance. So again, the uh, whiteboards and racks, it's also uh, materials provided, but also learning through books is um, very important to have, and that's what we found a lot in the innovation spaces that we mm -hmm. looked at. Yeah, and you can do that, um, use your physical resources if you make a program for that. Um, for example, have community or networking events on a, on a regular basis or also use the knowledge that you have within your organization or your company and make it visible. Yeah? Marie has different knowledge than I have and um, yeah, make it visible and provide it to the people. <coughs> and also invest in training and education. <coughs> and then um, one last thing that I could mention is um, also use the space not only for your work, you can use it beyond. Go further and have um, like after work get-togethers or something, or yeah, after-work drinks, like this stuff. Yeah, and through that, of course, um, again, uh, collaboration and um, innovation mm -hmm. is fostered. Yeah. So, so what um, can we conclude from that? And so we have three main things. First is um, see space not only as physical, but see it more than an, an ecosystem that consists of physical and non-physical um, things. Mm, there is a quote <laughs> from a, from a um, 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 sociologist I, I have in mind, and she says that um, space, uh, or without humans and human acting, there is no space, there is only place. So space only um, co um, exists if there is um, an interaction between physical goods and human beings, so uh, an interaction between structure and action. So, um, so the second one would be, um, if you want to have innovative products or inno innovative services, you also have to have innovative things and methods to do that. Yeah, so um, work is still a bit stuck in industrial age, and if you want um, to get rid of that, yeah, you have to find the innovative met methods for that. <clears throat> and last but not least, and this is, um, for us, the most important finding in our, in our research that in the innovation process, space can be a very, very powerful tool and use that as a tool. Yeah. Okay. And um, this quote, the space is the body language of the organization, is also important when you think again about the millennial um, generation maybe really make it attractive and this is also why um, the companies that we work with in our research actually approach, uh, approach us mostly and or uh, redesign their space into innovation spaces to really make it more attractive mm -hmm. so maybe also so last slide what <laughs> comes next of course we have to evaluate our stuff and um, have to view um, different organizations and more organizations and find ways um, also to measure the success because that's really, really difficult. Um, what, how can you measure innovation and the success of a space? So if you have any suggestions or idea for, for us, we will be very grateful if you share them with us now. Yeah. So. Thank you very much uh, yeah. for your attention and feel free to contact us. If you have any uh, space topics, want to go more in detail, we're happy to be approached by you. <laughs>